Good afternoon. Uh, my name is David Ellsmith. I'm Partnership Manager for Superfast Business Wales. We're the digital arm of Business Wales. Um, and, and the first rule of speaking is never follow somebody that's just offered you money. Because <laughs> I don't have any money. Our project is a knowledge exchange program. I'll tell you a little bit about the project, uh, then some of the things we cover in our workshops, and then some of the case studies that we've got for some rural and, and farm-based businesses about how they're using technology to, to diversify what they do on the farm. Um, our program is Pan Wales. Uh, we've been running for about three years now. We've got about another two years to go. We run a whole series of workshops, about 50 a quarter Pan Wales, helping small businesses understand what they can and can't do in the digital arena. Uh, we'll talk a little bit about what the workshops are in a minute. What you also get at the workshops is access to one-to-one -one support from a digital business advisor. They'll come into your business and spend a couple of hours doing uh, initially a diagnostic, what hardware, what software are you using, but then they'll focus in on really whatever it is you want to get out of the program. What are you trying to achieve? What's your project? They'll leave you with a comprehensive digital report that's got some immediate actions, things you must do now. Now, whether that's to do with uh, security on your software, updating your software, often it's things like Google My Business, which we'll talk about in a minute. Uh, but it's also a longer term. It sits on your digital bookshelf. So as your business grows and changes, you've got a resource that you can go to to find out about what you can and can't do. Um, we also do a free website review, if you've got one running at the moment. That is a traffic light report. It tells you what's good, what's bad, and what you can do to change it. You get access to the software for about 30 days, so you can make some changes, run the report again, and hopefully see some improvements. Um, I also usually at this point tell people what we don't do. Uh, we're not an IT company. We don't plug and play. We don't generally touch your computer, unless it is just to show you how to do something. And we don't do broadband, although we can, as part of the process, help you with connectivity issues. Particularly in the tourism sector, we do quite a lot of work helping people understand what they should and shouldn't be doing around offering Wi-Fi and things like that within properties. Um, we're getting good reviews. These are what some of the, the businesses that have been through the program have said. Um, the one I like the best is Sports Injury Fix down at the bottom left there. And he says, the program helped take the mystery out of digital technology. We're a very practical bunch. We're here to help you achieve what you want to achieve. So why should you be thinking about using digital technology in your business? Well, really, you can't afford not to. It's about reducing costs, how you can run your business. And I'll give you a really simple example in a minute. It's about saving time, that all that back office stuff that you usually sit at the kitchen table and do. This can do it quite often automatically for you. Hopefully, it's about growing profits if you do things right. And it's about improved stability about how you can make sure you are keep running your business no matter where you are, what you're doing, and whatever happens in your business. So what are the type of things we talk about in our workshops? This bit is about how you run your business in the cloud. So it's talking about things like how you can use Office products, Office 365, so you can have access to all of your files, all of your, your communications, wherever you are, and some of the other People that do that, iWork is the Apple thing, and obviously the Google Docs, which you can access for free now to a certain level. We talk about things like increasingly becoming called cloud phones. That's VoIP, Voice Over Internet Protocol. My mobile phone that I hope I've switched off in my back pocket is also my desk phone, the landline number. So wherever I am, if somebody rings my landline, it'll ring in my pocket. So wherever you are, you're, you're in your office. Um, we talk a lot about client relationship management software, or using the data you've got in your business, how you store it, where you store it, what you do with it, how you manipulate it to understand how your business is running, and perhaps more importantly, using that data to understand how you can improve what your business is doing. It's also about increasingly, um, particularly around the tourism and, and um, catering aspects, people don't understand the power of the data that they've got. Who's coming to my business? What are they doing? What are they spending? How did they find me? All of that helps you focus on where you move with your business going forwards. Uh, I probably needn't talk to you guys about uh, on, uh, filling in forms to get money in on, online accountancy. Increasingly more important, although they keep putting the deadline off for the ultimate making tax digital, it's still coming over the horizon. And actually, I would always say, don't do it because you have to. Do it because it's a really good way of actually managing your understanding your finances and where everything is. Doing it as you go along is much quicker than taking that plastic bag along to your account and them doing your accounts for you at the end of the year. 
Th this is just to give you some examples of how um, software as a service, software in the cloud is changing. This is what we call the periodic table of Office 365. Most people have some form of Office 365, whether on, the, on their computer itself, or this is the cloud version, Office 365. And most people are using the good old world, the good old Excel spreadsheets, and possibly email. But you've got access to over 50 different applications in there. Everything from MileIQ that records all your, your business miles that you do in the car. It's a, an app that sits on your phone. And as you drive, it automatically clocks that mileage. All you do is tell it whether it's business or personal. And it relates that to HMRC tax rates. And you can send that email straight to your accounts. Uh, you've got Microsoft Flow, which is uh, a piece of software that you can tell it to do automatically uh, automatic processes. So if you're filling in one spreadsheet, but that stuff needs to be in two or three spreadsheets, Flow can do that. So you're only putting information in once, it automatically puts it into the other spreadsheets for you. Um, obviously, you've got Skype for Business in there and Teams. They're about how you can communicate with people. We've worked with um, um, a, a, a rural business that, um, he's a business consultant. He's moved up from the smoke somewhere. He does most of his consultations now using FaceTime. Just for example, how he's using the technology in a different way, so he's not automatically going out and seizing his clients. He's using the, the software to enable him to do that. All of this is £10 per user per month. That's all it is, and that's your only commitment as well. It's a 30-day rolling contract nowadays. Uh, and increasingly, most software you have access to, you can purchase on that basis. It's on-demand basis, so you're not gone of the days when you spent 500 quid and all those pile of disks sat in the corner and you had to update them every year for another 70 or 80 quid. You see, you pay for it monthly, and you only pay for what you use. Um, slightly different, but a tourism business we work with, Clare Lake Havens in the north, uh, they go up from about 20 core staff to 60 or 70 in the summer. So they just up and down their subscription as they're, according to how many staff they need it to have at the time. So it saves them significant amounts of money. Good old social media. Uh, by far our most popular workshops about how you can use social media to promote your business, but perhaps more importantly, think about how you can use it to both create a brand, but also understand what's happening in the world. Um, top left, the little red square, the little red button, for people like me that I don't ever think about it because I'm the wrong age group, but for anybody under about a 30, that's where they search. They don't use Google. They always search on YouTube. Somebody somewhere has done a video showing you how to do it constantly. So another thing to bear in mind, increasingly now, video is a really important part of how you promote your business. Um, Google own YouTube, by the way, so they've still got your data whichever way you go. Um, Facebook, increasingly important for small businesses. Personally, I don't use it because I don't understand why people are obsessed with showing people pictures of food and telling everybody where they're going on holiday. But I understand for a small business. And we'll talk a bit in one of the case studies about how you can really target market what you're doing. So obviously, we've talked about marketing. Increasingly used as uh, uh, customer service. Uh, there's a gallery we've worked with out in the Gower. She uses Twitter to engage in conversation with her clients. It's really quite interesting about, you know, that they all tweet her. She asks people to tweet her about the art she's got in a gallery, and then she really en engages with them in conversation, which is hopefully bringing them into buy. The dreadful reviews, you have to be engaged with the review sites. If you're not, somebody somewhere could be saying somebody nasty about you and you haven't responded to it. But in, we all do it. You all go, the first thing you do before you buy or book anything is, what are people saying about it? usually discount the top one because you know that's somebody lying about it and you discount the rubbish one, the horrid one at the bottom, but it's somewhere in the middle where we all kind of live, isn't it? Um, you can use it for um, asking questions, business networks. It says HR there. That's more about, you know, that somebody somewhere has probably done something similar to you or is thinking about it. So you can use that social media to go and ask those questions or search to find out what they're doing. And I think it, it's not so much up there, actually, but one of the things we emphasize a lot is about social listening. What is the world doing out there? What's happening both locally but also na internationally, nationally, about in your industry, in your area? What's going on? H how can I make sure I'm part of that or perhaps do something completely different so I'm not part of the herd? But it's not just about shouting about what you're doing. It's about looking to see what the rest of the world is doing and understanding how you can fit in with that. Obviously, we talk a lot about um, digital marketing. Um, 
We've already talked about review sites, Google My Business, which is that bit when you search on the right-hand side, which suggests what the business is. Make sure that you, you own that, that you own it, doesn't cost you anything, but that you're putting that information in there. If you just click on it, it'll say, is this you? Um, and you make sure you've got the right picture up, the right details of when you're open or shut and everything like that. The right picture is quite important, actually, because it's postcode based. Sometimes it's, it's a picture of the grotty barn down the road rather than your really nice house that, you're, that you want to get people to come to. But you can change all of that. You, um, you put in your details. Up until about two months ago, this used to make me laugh, they used to send you a postcard to make sure it was you with a bill code on it. So digital business was sending you a postcard, but now they do it on your mobile phone. So they check that it's you, so nobody else is doing it. If you, ha if you haven't done that for your business, make sure you do that tonight. It's free. And email marketing, which is still the most effective, which is back to what I was talking about, about collecting client details and understanding what details you've got in your business. Getting paid. Wow, even this picture's a little bit old. This world moves so fast. Um, Increasingly now, we are moving to a more and more cashless society. Uh, farm events at, I'm a cyclist, so if I go out, I don't carry cash, I only have my card, so if that cafe doesn't take card, I don't buy coffee and cake. Uh, increasingly, this is important, but increasingly, it's not just about taking the money, it's again, it's collecting that data for you. How much have they spent, who are they, what time they spent it, uh, and it's not uh, the PayPal one, but also, um, a product called Square enables you to do small, small scale barcoding, just like the Tesco's of this world. So you barcode things, so again, you know about stock replenishment, and if you link it into your CRM system, you can almost do automatic ordering. I'm down to the last two, it'll automatically send out an order for you. So you can start to run your business completely, completely online. Not a farming business, I know, but I use this one quite a lot. This is my friend who's a painter and decorator. About four or five years ago, he bought himself an iPad with a laser sight on and the nice little Dulux app in the middle there, which you can take pictures of your room and put all the different shades of the paint on the room. It's quite whizzy now. It spins around. It's 3D. It's fantastic. But anyway, so he, he's in the house. He's taken measurements. You've chosen your paint. He's got a simple Excel spreadsheet with all his materials down the side. Using Microsoft Flow, he that then converts that into a quote. So there and then, sitting in your living room, you've chosen the paint, he's given you a quote immediately. He then comes and puts the paints on the wall. He's got a payment system on there. So he's getting paid while you're in the room. Even that, he said, whereas in the past, the job was 100 quid, quite often somebody would say, I've got 90 in my pocket. And he'd go, okay, I'll take it, I've got paid. Now he's getting the 100 pounds, because it's there and then. But that's linked in to his account system straight into his account system, so it's the invoice and the payment is all done in his account system, and it's created his CRM system. In his words, all I do is put paint on the wall now. The business runs itself. Quite a simple, simple example, but it just shows you how you can completely automate your business. This works for businesses. Office Interiors company saving three and a half thousand pounds. Nordic International, they do translations. Again, they're a rural business, actually. They do translation services for the Nordic countries. They've moved to a VoIP system, uh, cloud system. They do a lot using Skype. And they're getting more customers because they can shout using social media. They're getting more customers abroad using their services. So just uh, to finish off, four or five case studies about the companies we've worked with in this field, about how they've diversified in using the technology. Uh, this is Brooks Dairy. Again, they started to understand the use of the data they're getting in their business and how they can use uh, MailChimp, which is a, a, a resourcing software. So you can create really nice um, mailings and you can schedule when it goes out. It also collects all the things you need to do for GDPR, all the unsubscribe buttons and all that sort of stuff on it. But it also, again, shows you how many people have opened it, how many people have clicked through, what time they did it all and things like this. But you can also schedule it so you can sit on the... Uh, on your desktop on Sunday night and do all your emails for the next coming two or three months. And it schedules it all for you, so it's done. You don't have to do it at the time you want to send your email. They've also moved now to online ordering through their website. They're selling directly through their website. Uh, they were originally uh, uh, using a third party to do that, but they brought all that in-house on site. And there's what I was talking about before, using Twitter and Facebook, they're able to see what other companies are doing, but also what their customers are doing, what their customers are asking for. 
and they use that. And I heard somebody, the speaker before last, while I'm talking about your branding and making things personal. That's what social media can do for you, that you can start to have conversations directly with your customers really simply. So you're building that, though you can act internationally and sell like internationally, whatever it might be, so far away, you can still act as if you're just down the road just through using social media. From Pram Yurts, out in Carmarthenshire, uh, they both have, um, have the yurts that you can go and stay in on site, but they also make for other people. Uh, they completely uh, built their website themselves after being on one of our workshops um, and thought very much about what that content might be. So again, making it personal, nice pictures of the them and their family, so that you can see it's a family business, that personal touch again. Um, and they also started taking their bookings directly themselves to the website, moving away from the proprietary sites, which can take up to 50% of your booking costs. I'm sure I don't need to tell some of you that. So it's just showing you again that you, the technology now, the, the, the software enables you to do most of this yourself if you want to, if you have the time and the effort to do it. So they're saying two thirds of their bookings now could come directly through their website rather than through the, uh, the proprietary booking.com or whatever it else might be. So that's using a mixture of their own marketing, their own social media marketing, and Facebook advertising, whatever, and taking bookings through their own website. This is a slightly large one, this is Rugged State. Um, they've completely uh, put broadband and Wi-Fi across their estates so they can link all of their payment systems together, all of their ordering systems together. So they're collecting all their data back into one point immediately all the time so they can see if one particular part of the estate is really busy, they can put resources across to it from other parts. So they use a point of sales uh, and chip and pin and obviously contact this now and internal Wi-Fi. So again, you've probably seen them in restaurants. If you take an order on your phone quite often now in restaurants, that's going straight into the system in, in the kitchen immediately. There's no sort of to and fro -ing. And the last one is Wonderfully Wild. And I put this presentation together the other week and um, I'm not a massive fan personally of, of social media marketing uh, and, and the whole Facebook thing, but it really struck me this one. I, I don't know if you're aware on Facebook, you can really target market. I think it's down to 150 different things you can specify that you want. So that's age, geography, interests, um, 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 religion randomly, w whether they're just in a relationship, just falling out of a relationship, whether they're pregnant, whether they're about to get married, all of these things Facebook know from what you put on Facebook. So you can target market really right down. And this organization, uh, uh, Glamping Site and, and Cottages, they, are running at about 80% occupancy. They do 90 day campaigns on Facebook where they're spending one pound a day. So 90 pounds every quarter, that's all they're spending and they're 80% occupancy. Because they've worked at where they are in North Wales, they've worked out where their customers are coming from, the type of people that are coming. So that's where they aim their marketing at. And the beauty of things like this, and if you come on the workshops, people will tell you with far more intelligence than I can about all the data you can see from your campaigns. So you start a bit like that, and then you analyze the data, who's, who's clicking, who's going through, so you start to do that. So you really focus your marketing. So that's a really, really quick run through what we do. Um, all of our workshops are quite small, eight, 10, 12 businesses in the room. We've even run them here in the past, actually, in the well, Chumman building over there. Uh, we run them all over Wales. Um, if you want to find out more, oh, I've got the dog food business, come back to that in a second. Um, just Google Superfast Biz because our website address is the Business Wales address and it's like that, so it's huge. Just Google Superfast Biz, all of our workshops are on there. You can put yourselves on directly through or just ring the number there and somebody will register you. So you go to the workshop, at that workshop, um, there'll be a one-to-one -one advisor and they won't let you out of the room until you've booked your one-to-one -one with them and they'll come to wherever you want them to, to come to. So that could be your place of work or a coffee shop, wherever it might be, and do the one-to-one -one, uh, uh, diagnostic with you and the report with you, and you get your free website review. That's just one of these serial entrepreneur people that do things. So again, that's talking about, um, that, that they're a, especially a dog food company now, but they're using their social media again to create interest. They take bookings through their own website using PayPal to pay. But again, I think the common theme through all of these is that branding, you can be really personal. So it's about taking your own pictures, doing it yourself. Mm -hmm.